Hi, welcome. Thank you for joining us today. Um, we are going to be discussing um, SLEDS as a program and what we do with um, Interchange Data Roots. So, um, but first, just before we get into that, I want to first acknowledge um, the Wurundjeri people, who are the traditional um, custodians of the land that we're on and pay respect to the past and present elders. Um, so, yeah, what is SLEDS? For those that don't know what that word stands for, it's School Leavers Employment Support. So, people that left school and they want support to find employment, um, that's what the SLOS program does. There's one of our, our guys at one of his work placements. Um, he's super excited to be there, as you can see. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about that place as we move through the presentation. So yeah, as part of Interchange Adoris, we run this program for a two-year program. It's NBIS funded, fully funded, um, so that would just be a hearing in your plan if you're asking for that. Um, it is a two-year program, so it's quite specific in the way that we work that program, which um, is what we're going to be talking about, um, what you could be expecting if you have a child enrolled in that program. So one of the things that we do do is work closely with families and the person because it's individually tailored, like it says. So we're very much about talking around what it looks like for that individual, what they're wanting in terms of work, or whether it's just about not employment at the end of the day, but just becoming more independent in the community. So just having good chats about what that looks like for your person. Um, and yeah, providing a learning pathway to work readiness and independence. So I guess the main things there is that we work closely with you, it's individually tailored, and it's work program readiness. It's not necessarily guaranteeing paid employment at the end of the two years, but it is really focusing on what does it mean to be in work, what do you need to get ready for work, and what does work look like for you, where are your skills, strengths, etc. So the first year, these are the main things we focus on. Learning in small groups, beginning to examine what careers, job roles are, exploring what responsibilities look like, travel training, independence, skill building. So the small groups, it's, it's been really effective. Um, they all get to know each other really well. They get to know each other's strengths. They become a really good solid team, which is obviously a life skill in itself to work within a team. So we've seen really good um, sort of success in that small group dynamic. Um, and yeah, just beginning to examine what career jobs roles are, because you know, you're talking about people that left, just left school, so they are going to be not necessarily knowing what job one that they want, what it looks like out there in the community. Um, maybe not what they don't actually know what their skills are yet. Um, and what's involved, like, you can say you might want to work at JB Hi-Fi because you like DVDs, but you might not actually understand what a role that JB Hi-Fi entails. So just exploring that stuff. Um, travel training, some people have never done travel training before, some have with school. So there's some confidence and some who are just a bit scared by that, and families can be scared by that because there's the risk involved. So we work with families and individuals around what that might look like. And building general independent skills. So in the home, in community, in workplace settings, in communication and social skills. So a whole broad range of independent skills are worked on as well. So the, the first year and the second year are built, uh, split up into modules. So we can kind of work quite effectively in being measured and um, ticking off goals. And yeah, we want to be measuring our, our work and um, results, I suppose, so we're not just idling through two years without any structure. So we've split it up into modules, um, and they're quite specific, so that we are ticking off those um, areas of um, goal setting. So getting to know you, um, as, it's as simple as that, really. With new people, Matt ne never worked with us before, so you're getting to know them as individuals, getting to know how they operate in the group, their communication style, their learning style, their skills, strengths, um, yeah, what they're interested in, building trust, um, 
all those sort of things you would do with a, with a new person. Um, and then the group is also getting to know each other because some, some of them actually have come from the same schools, which has been a really good thing, but also they are kind of like, they sort of also, um, what's the word? They sort of buddy up in a negative way to some degree because they are relying on each other, which is, it sounds good, which it is good, but also we also have to teach them to, to step away from that comfort zone and go out on their own because sometimes they actually want different things but they say they want the same. So there's been a little bit of learning around that too, like, oh, much are okay to spread out on my own two wings. I don't need my buddy with me the whole time. Um, but in the beginning, that's that's been really helpful because they've supported each other and built confidence amongst themselves as friends. And we have people who don't know anyone. And so it's about learning to engage in a group where you don't know someone and you might be feeling a bit nervous um, so that's been good learning for staff and the rest of the participants to say, "Why oh, did you did you check in how they are? Did you ask them how they how their day was? You know, just building that social awareness of inviting a new person into the clique, I suppose. Um, so that whole communication, social skills, activities is just some of that's just simply having conversation about how their weekend was and people taking turns like. Um, speaking and listening exercises could be as simple as we do a round in the morning to say how the week was because we only meet um, twice a week, um, two days a week. So we don't know what the story they've done for the rest of their week. So it gets them individual time to share, um, speak in front of other people, take turns in listening to other people. Um, and so that's actually been, it sounds like a simple thing, but it's actually been really good in confidence building for the group as they got to know each other because they designated time to listen to one another, hear about their interests, hear about what they've done, a bit more of their external world, not just the SLES world. Um, and that's built friendships and common interests and stuff like that. So that has been good. And we've seen confidence grow heaps in just that one activity where at the beginning some people were just on their iPad and really gingerly moving around their iPad, not really sure what to share. Um, and now we're just like, I want to share, my turn. And so, you know, just simple things like that has been um, good to do. And um, public speaking exercises, um, that's simple day-to-day -day stuff. So, so a lot of the stuff we want to do is day-to-day -day learning, this natural based learning that you'll do in community that you don't even think about that you're doing it. but we're intentionally doing it, but but identifying that in a natural way. So public speaking exercises, there's also courses that we might want to do in public speaking practice, but just day to day, okay, you guys go and ask the train station guy when the next train is. The staff don't need to do that. Encouraging them to step up, ask questions themselves, you know, talk to the shopkeeper instead of the shopkeeper looking at us, just throwing it back to the person. You order your own drink, you pay, check, you get, you get your change. That sort of normal, everyday interaction. Um, and the valid course, so they did a South Advocacy course. Um, we had um, Zoe from Valid come in and we did, a, I think it was a five to eight week course. And um, there's a lot of sit down course, which some people struggled with sitting down, but the, the information was really valuable and at the end of it, everyone said they felt more confident to speak up, um, more confident that they understood what their rights were in community and just um, a sense of responsibility and self-worth was the general um, description of how they felt after doing that course, so it was really valuable. Um, and a lot of work is done around discovering the individual's talents, interests and strengths. So that's conversationally, what are you into, what do you think you're good at, talking to families, where do you see their strengths, weaknesses, and just building a bit of a one-pager around that person so you can start to build that throughout the next few months. And um, obviously in a small group you get to see each person individually, you get to see how they communicate, how they learn, are they good at reading? Are they good at writing? Are they good at maths in terms of money skills? Like all that stuff you just build on each time and you sort of keep 
a record of that information. So you just start to get a really good picture of what type of role you might see down the track for that person. So module two, my community. So that is all about and about the community and building their confidence in that. So some of the guys have been out and about in the community traveling around before and are quite confident in that and others just haven't had that experience before um, after leaving school. So that's again, you're working with individuals differently, um, building confidence differently. So um, yeah, just looking at the workplaces that are local. So the whole point where we want to start from is, is there local places in your community that you've thought about working at, that your parents might have thought about working at for you? Do you have networks in your local community that you can tap into? So there would be where we'd want to start um, because best practice and most success happens when you get a job through someone you know um, or a contact that you know um, rather than just knocking on doors. So we want to start there and um, people are often more confident they know their community, they know how to get the bus from there to there um, or they know that shop because they go there every weekend with their parents for coffee. So that's kind of where we'd like to start. Um, and travel training, um, as I said before, some people know how to get to work from home to um, an interchange site in community and some people don't. So we start doing that training and like if we've done like um, worksheet based stuff or research based stuff, we have to learn to get to a library. So that might be a travel training thing that we do. So we might meet in Brona at one of the interchange sites and we learn to travel to get to um, when we're library say. So, um, and one of the good things that's actually been um, worked effectively in the groups we've done recently is we have a, um, a leader for the group. So we pick a leader from the participants and we say who would like to be the leader today. So they get the choice um, to take the role of leader for the day and it's their, their role to keep an eye that the group's together, we haven't forgotten anyone, we know where we're going, we're checking at the road that we're crossing properly, um, they've worked out what platform we need to get on, that we've got the right train and obviously staff are there, making sure the leader's not missing anything. But it's been great to see that blossom their confidence and take a, res a role and a responsibility seriously. Um, and some have like forgotten, oh, they're, they're behind me. Like, they haven't noticed that someone's lagged behind. You're like, oh, have, have we got everyone? Is everyone together? And they're like, oh, no, jo Johnny's a bit too far behind. Okay, well, so we wait for them to catch up. So just natural, like, little reminders and prompts that you are actually trying to keep an eye on people. So, yeah, that's been a good, a good little role, just a natural role to create. Um, and workplace visits. So we have gone to a few different workplaces to just visit. So, like... Like a lot of the people have said, oh, I want to work in Kmart in the DVD section or JB Hi-Fi or, you know, they've got this concept of what that means. And so we've gone to some of those places just to have a walk through and identify roles. Do they wear a uniform? Um, you know, do they have to do certain things? Are, are they just stacking shelves or are they moving product or... You know, just discuss those things while we're in the workplace and get them to be thinking and looking for those things themselves. Um, so there's been a bit of educational stuff around that. Um, diversity training with minus 18. So just getting them to think about wider community, what that means as an individual in the world. And everyone's different and that's okay. So just getting a little bit of an understanding about what that means to them. And the community safety, we um, have the community liaison um, officer discuss doing some community safety just around public transport and what to do if someone approached you and you felt uneasy. You know, we, we go to the um, safety zones at the train station so all the guys know if you're worried, you can go there. That side of risk management side of stuff. Um, same with the valid, same safe course, that's an, again another course that we've done which was really valuable about um, understanding your rights in the workplace, feeling safe, what you do if you want to complain, um, what, what you do in the community if someone approaches you, like I said, that you're uneasy, 
who to identify. If you can't see someone in uniform, would you go into a shop, ask a shopkeeper? Those type of general safety parameters to be thinkful and mindful of. Um, and the volunteering, obviously, we then now start looking at um, if we've got someone very clearly, we've had lots of information from the family, these are their skills, this is what we're thinking of, there's a contact there, so we can go straight to that contact and set up a volunteering role for that person. Um, some of that's come from word of mouth, some of that's come because we've approached places. Um, but yeah, getting them into a volunteering role as soon as possible is always good because it's learning what it's like to be in a workplace, you're learning a whole range of things in terms of um, team dynamics, talking to your co-workers, following instructions, and it's just good experience for them to know what it's like in the workplace. So yeah, getting ready for my day. So you're obviously looking at the work side of stuff, but also general independence. And we hear sometimes that they're not super independent at home, but they want to go out and get a job. So a part of that plays into at home. So if you can get yourself up with an alarm, you can get your lunch and your breakfast ready and get to work on time, that all helps you in your work role. So we look at what did we need to do to assist at home in terms of, yeah, can we encourage them to say, did you make lunch today? Did you get you up with your alarm or did mum have to wake you up? You know, those sort of talks with the family, talks at home to reiterate that stuff's important. And if you want to get a job and you are serious about getting work, you also need to be independent at home as well. Um, and then we step up the travel training. So if there's specific places in their own community that they want to learn to get to, we can do that. Or, yeah, they've got a volunteering place now, so do they want to meet us there? So if there's people that have, um, have the capacity to do that, then we encourage that so that they're more and more independent um, as, as time goes on. And obviously, part of being independent is the, is the money skills. So we do do some um, like in-house based stuff, like money recognition. We have some real money, some fake money. We do a bit of group work around that. And that's also to help us gauge who understands what and where their levels are at. But a lot of that is if you're going out and they've got money to buy a drink, then you know, let's push you to do as much of that as possible yourself. Whether that's using the self-checkout or paying on a card or waiting for your change, asking how I got change, like thinking about those things. Um, so yeah, just trying to get them to do as much of that themselves. And then meal prep. So we've done a little bit of cooking um, because lunch making has been good and it's another group activity, it's a team working thing, everyone has a role, so we've done some like, eat just simple sandwich making, what would you do at home for your lunch prep, let's practice that a bit here. Um, we've done pizzas so that everyone has a role, so we go to the supermarket, okay, so it's your job to buy the tomatoes, this is how much money you have, so you need to budget in that, so there's budgeting and money skills involved in that, so you know, those sort of processes we can set up that have worked well, um, and it's it's good to see them work as a team and take their roles seriously and they enjoy having their bit of money and that they've got their role in the supermarket, etc. So that's that's all worked um, worked well. Um, and they come up with the menu and so forth. So there's all planning involved in that too. So uh, module four, so work skills training. So again, another level of adding to what we're working towards is being work ready. Um, what do you need to think about when you're in a workplace? Are you oh and trained? Do you know first aid? Do you have a good CV and covering letter that you can use whenever you need? Um, how is your team building skills going? Um, and yeah, are you ready to get into a work experience placement that's going to work for you and you have a, an understanding of what's required there? So um, yeah, as it says here, they did some um, basic first aid um, training, but this one is more specific and um, is actually qualified. So, and it, but it's based for individuals with disabilities, so it's really exciting um, partnership to have. Um, so they will tailor it to the understanding of the person, so they actually go away with a genuine understanding of what first aid means. Um, oh and skills training, we do that naturally as well, um, just in if we're in, in a setting like a, like the site, an interchange site, we'll be 
remind them of, oh, so say how you've got your bag there, what would happen? And someone will look, oh, you can trip over it. So it's like just that constant reminding of, okay, where does things belong? Um, there's leaves on the floor, would that be a, a trip hazard? We talk about those things, we do um, some worksheets around those sort of safety items, what you need to, we've talked a lot about PPE before COVID, but now even more so. Um, so, you know, examples of PPE, so they'll run through gloves, boots, goggles, eyewear, masks, all those sort of things. So that's all really quite um, concrete for them now. Um, and we do go through resume writing, so we get a lot of information from family that they might have had work experience through school. Um, so that all goes on there. And then things we've noticed um, as well that we see are good skills, we'll put that all in the resume. So um, we try and have that all up and ready for when they do go out and have a work placement. And yeah, the work experience placement. So we, as I said before, we go to places that are known contacts or we approach new places of work. And we are asking for work experience placements if they don't have paid roles. And at this point, we will be looking for just work experience placements to see, to, so people can get a feel for work, what work looks like because they might have a concept. I remember working with a gentleman who was adamant he wanted to work in a cafe. So I'd set up a cafe job and he lasted one day. He's like, oh, it's not what I thought it was. I said, that's fine, but you've got to try. So these work experience placements are great because they do give them a real taste for what work is like, what it's like in a new team environment. And um, they can say, oh yeah, that's not quite what I thought, it's not for me. So yeah, now we're on to year two. <laughs> So, as you can see, there's actually a lot packed into these years, but um, it seems to go really quick. So, um, but it's, it's been really good as a work Lens to see improvement across the two years and then just really hopeful for what's ahead for that young adult um, once you've seen the progression across the two years. So, it's been really good to be a part of it from the get go and see how much people have grown. It's been really encouraging. So, year two. Um, yeah, focusing on areas of interest, so really honing in on that individual where their skills are. And you're constantly seeing them grow in skills and in confidence and ability as you get to know them more, as you challenge them more, as they've been out in the workforce in terms of volunteering or work experience. So that just continues to be honed. And so you can really then start to drill down, okay, well, what does that really look like? And is that really feasible for that person? And that's when that one-on-one -on -one support comes in. So, so Johnny's adamant. He's been really showing the skills in terms of, say, Woolworths, for example, or a pizza shop. So you would then say, well, we've got a known contact. You've approached. They're open. And then you would go in with that person for the hours that you've arranged with that workplace and you would support one-on-one -on -one to help train, work alongside, build confidence. So you're there to support the employer as well as the participant and that will continue as long as needed for the person and the employer. So we work very closely with those arrangements. So we had someone working in an op shop um, with a support worker and that was a really good arrangement. He'd learned a variety of skills, he wasn't just doing the one thing and so his confidence grew in what it meant to be in a workplace and he had a support person with him the whole time. Um, yeah, and that was just a really positive experience for him and his family because they could see how much more independent and confident he was in himself. Um, we've done barista training, which the guys have absolutely loved and thrived in, um, and that was just a community house, it was a five week course. Um, and so, you know, they can put that on their resume as. Um, being barista trained and one of our girls has done that course and is now working at Gloria Jeans. Not necessarily on a barista machine at this stage, but she's working there as a paid employee and um, absolutely loves it. And the employer has been fantastic. So even through COVID when they've been shut, we've been checking in. You know, don't forget about us. She, she always greets her with her name and greets her fondly. So she has to work to get, as soon as we're back up and running, we'll contact you. So that's another thing we like to try and do is stay in touch with people across the the, um, across the board so that we are just touching base all the time with employers that we might have spoken to a couple of months ago, said that we're, they were interested but we haven't heard, so you know, we revisit that stuff as well. Um, so responsible service of alcohol, so 
a lot of places want that if it's in a cafe environment, so that's a simple course that can be done and then can be assisted for the guys to obviously do that. Um, some places obviously want working with children's checks, so we assist them to do those forms with a normal family. Um, finding and maintaining work experience, so I've talked about that before. It's just more and more looking for new places to touch base with and connect and form partnerships with, because obviously the more we form partnerships with people and we have ongoing SLES participants coming through the program, then we've got great established relationships with workplaces, working working experience places that we can funnel people through because the places that we are trying to partner with have a broad range of skills that we can um, teach to people. So I'll talk a little bit more about those specific places a bit later. And a focus on wellbeing. So obviously <laughs> it's not just all about having a job, it's um, how you manage life work balance. So we do a little bit about that as well. Um, so life skills training, so that's a little bit about the healthy work-life balance. So again, a little bit more um, advocacy stuff that we did with Valor Talks, a little bit about bullying and what you do in a work environment where you're feeling bullied, especially if it was potentially from your boss. Where do you go? Who do you talk to? Understanding drugs and alcohol, obviously we can't control everything that happens in a, in a workplace, so there may be other people that you know, talk to your young adult and it's just, and when they're out in community, they're travelling around seeing people affected by drugs or alcohol on the train at the station. We've had a few people approach us just because, you know, they're a little bit happy on whatever they've taken and, you know, the guys can be a little bit, sometimes they don't register that that's what's happening and some are a little bit nervous about, oh, what, what was wrong with him? He was a bit funny. And so just having those conversations about, what is out there in the community and how to deal with that. Um, health relationships with Headspace, so your mental health, um, you know, that's something that's really important to everyone and having an understanding at some level of what that means for an individual and where to go if they're struggling with that and we talk to families about that as well. Um, and just, yeah, knowing that it's great to have a job but it's also great to have balance of not work, 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 but what else are you interested in? And, you know, we're here to support the whole person, not just a person that wants work. So finding independence is another level of just not the work side of stuff, but life side of stuff. Like, okay, so you've got a job, you're getting a wage. Where does your money go? How much are you getting? How much are you saving? Do you have to pay tax on that? That whole side of... if you know, a person wants to understand that and get involved in that, just that basic structure of there's more to just getting a paycheck. Like, yeah. So we spend a little bit of stuff on that. Um, the Smith family have some courses that, and information that can be run through on that stuff as well. Um, yeah, just that, you know, they're 18, they can vote. Um, what does that mean? <laughs> um, we have conversations about who's a Prime Minister, um, and a lot of them know who the Prime Minister is and who the other parties are and um, it's quite interesting hearing their views on what they think of the, the Prime Minister. Um, so they've been valuable conversations and some, some of them have no idea and they're like, oh, well my friend knows about that, maybe I should understand a bit more about that. So just that peer learning has been really valuable too. Um, and then yeah, just advanced travel training. So. Okay, so now they're pretty confident on travel, training, public transport. Let's one staff member stay here, the other one go to the destination, they're going on the bus on their own. So that next step up, let's get more and more independent. And that's been really helpful and um, awesome to see a lot of the guys just go, yeah, I'm getting off here, I, I'm, I'm not going all the way back to Lilydale with you guys because I live halfway here and I'm, I'm able to get off by myself and get home myself and yeah just their independence and confidence is just gone through the roof because they're like we don't need a self all the time you know so <laughs> that's been nice to see we're doing ourselves up at a job which is a good thing um what is TAFE and investigate study so some of the jobs that people have been interested in say it's um dog grooming or working with animals is there a qualification that they could get that might help them get work 
um, or get them a better understanding of what might be involved in a role in that industry. So we've explored the idea with TAFE with some of the guys um, and obviously how much support would they need to do study. Um, and looking for events in community where they can fully take a role. So we, um, we had arranged before COVID to um, organise Bunnings um, barbecue fundraiser. Um, and that was going to be, okay, there's a piece of paper, you guys plan it, what do we need to think about? Um, what's involved and get them to be thinking about planning, organising those type of life skills. Um, there's money involved, so you're going to be taking the money, you're going to be taking the orders, so you're writing, reading, all those sort of skills that you just take for granted, purposely looking for events, how we can get them to do a team, in, a team environment, team project um, in community using all the skills they've learned. Um, and they were really keen enough for that because they're all confident young adults now um, who just want to get out there. So uh, it was a shame that that didn't come off, but those are the type of things we, we are looking for in terms of just promoting those skills. So getting work ready and next step. So yeah, we're getting towards the end of the two years now. So again, keeping um, those set modules to keep ourselves as staff accountable, um, keeping your families accountable to also go, okay, so is there anything you're thinking of? Have you been looking in your community or have you heard of murmurs of, oh, such and such said something about a job, maybe it would be good for Johnny? You know, like just again touching base for what that looks like for someone. And again going, this person's not quite ready, but geez, they've come a long way. So then what's next for them? Because if it's not work, then is it continued work readiness or more independence or a focus much more on communication because that's where there's a, uh, a weakness. So, yeah, just again keep looking at what that is for individually um, individuals. So, work visits. So, um, I actually got the pleasure of doing this, and it's again another um, way of learning more about the person. So, I took a variety of different people one on one to different workplaces that we'd already had in a relationship, we'd already set up, um, and it was taking the person to the workplace to say, okay, this is an option, they have a place for work experience, potentially ongoing paid work, is this something that would work for you? And if it was, then we would set them up in that environment. Um, and, you know, we might see five or six different workplaces in a day. And you can gauge from the person, because you're one-on-one -on -one with them and you're talking about it throughout the day, what feels best for you, what do you feel, which place, because you're visually there, they can see get a vibe, understand the environment you're talking about, they can, they were pretty clear about, oh, I don't like those four, but those two were, are be interested. So then you go, you go on those two and you, you start tracking more down that, that way. Um, family meetings, so another formal touch base with families. How are they going? Where are you seeing improvement? What do you see you want focused on in the next few months? What do you see moving forward outside of SLES? How can we support you with that? Um, and then if there's long-term work experience placements that are already existing or putting people into, we, um, we would be working on that. But at this point, a lot of them are already in those placements and they're ticking on and we're going, okay, so <clears throat> they've been doing this for a few months now or they've been doing this for six weeks now. What have they learned? What can be worked on is a new new task we can ask the employer to give them so they get a broad range of skills. Um, yeah, is are they engaging with their fellow workers or is it only with the staff member? So you kind of tracking that all the time so you can see, okay, well, I need to encourage them more to ask questions themselves because I'm not the only one asking questions as a staff member. So you're tweaking that all the time in that period of experience that they're getting. Um, and again, yeah, the individual job hunt tailored to the person's strengths and gifts and um, adding more to their work, um, to their resume. So they may have done like the op shop for the last three months, but now they want to move on to something else, but we might get a reference from that op shop or at least put it on their resume. And then, yeah, 
like I said before, just um, dialing in on anything else that's needed to be done, whether it's more training. A lot of them have talked about getting their learners, and not just because they want to drive, but because they want to just, they, they know that's what you do. When you finish school and you can get your learners and you can potentially drive a car one day, it's, it's, um, it's kind of that, I'm old enough now. Um, I'm confident I want to take control of that aspect. So there's a little bit of um, clear interpretation around that stuff, but some of them have just been happy to do the test and get their learners. They don't actually want to drive, but having that um, learners is a big deal. So we talk to families about um, what's appropriate there, and um, <laughs> you see the picture of um, one of the people driving the ride on. That is like the bee's knees when we go to different places and they've got ride ons, they want to all drive it. One, because it's fun, two, because it's their really only experience of driving a vehicle. And they're really good at it. And obviously, there's risk, <laughs> risk management taken there, and there's always a person right there with them. But they're just so excited and have loved thriving on that responsibility and independence to do that stuff. Um, and often do it better than the staff do it. Um, and then if there's any certification that's actually needed, so obviously some workplaces want you to have manual handling and all that sort of stuff, so we'd be looking at that. And we've talked to them about how to get a crib check and what that means. And obviously I've talked about tertiary qualifications and advanced first aid or forklift license. So we're looking at all those things, or we might, they might need a work white card, you know, one of those building white card worker things. So yeah, continuing to get work ready and, and honing in on those things of people that are ready for that level. And um, some people, because you're working with individuals and it's a small group, People are at varying levels, and that's a ch that's a challenge in itself. But they also then learn from one another and get inspired by one another where they're at, where they want to be. Um, but you also have to be mindful of that because you might be having someone who's ready to go and get they've got their working with children check, they've got a work placement at a childcare place, and they're ready to rock and roll. And then there's someone who's still like not quite sure about public transport, not quite sure where they want to work. They've done some volunteering, but that's kind of where they've grown, but it's where they're still at. So you're juggling that all the time. Um, but, you know, that's that's the work that it is, and that's not a bad thing. Um, where do we go from here? So there's the finding and keeping your job funding through the NDOS, which is specific funding like SLES, and that is continued um, that you can apply for that will continually help you find work. If you haven't got work or you're not quite ready, like I said before, then you can use that funding to um, help you have support worker to, to work alongside you with that. And that's in the employment, like support in employment, in terms of in the workplace and not just finding it. Um, I guess our role is to find some work that is meaningful to the person and that's our end goal but it's not the, it's not um, promised I suppose um, so yeah we just want to make sure they're work ready we've explored opportunities they've got some work experience or volunteering under their belt and if we can get a job then fantastic but if we can't there's other options afterwards that can continue the work that we've done um, and that may be a disability support employment support system through the government um, where they get subsidised work placements um, and that can be talked through with families who might need some more information about that um, and um, you know they may have the job that we've set up for them but they need ongoing support after SLEDS in that work environment so we discuss about what that would mean and what funding you would need to apply for that like the finding and keeping a job so yeah it's not like you finish SLEDS and we drop you <laughs> There's a continuation of um, discussion throughout and after about how we can support that, that um, ongoing improvement in your young, young person. So these are some of the organisations that we've worked with that have been amazing. Um, so ECOS is a um, ecological community um, hub really where they have a whole range of small businesses run from a site in Westburn 
and it's such a beautiful environment to be in, you know, up in the middle of the hills and there's people who generally um, care about their environment and um, small business and it's all very natural, there's nothing not organic there. Um, and so we manage a plot, uh, like a community garden plot, and so it's the guys' total responsibility to look after that land and grow what they want to grow, harvest it, replant, um, water. And we also help manage the grounds around, um, so keeping the lawns tidy, any other work um, that needs to be done, like putting up fencing, burning off. So a whole range of roles can be done up there, not just our community garden plot, but um, that's where we've done the rhino wall mowing. Um, they've yeah, used hammers and drills to build a fence, um, there's been a staff member up there that's worked with just our group um, of, of volunteers to teach them new skills. They all adore going there, as do the staff, because it's such a beautiful spot. And yeah, they're learning a whole range of tasks and skills. So following instructions, um, taking responsibility of something living, because you've got to nurture vegetables, um, understanding what different um, seasons are, you know, a lot of weeding, but a lot of pruning, but a lot of harvesting, so they get to take home their veg, which always puts a smile on everyone's face. Pets Haven um, is an animal shelter in Bayswater, and that's um, open to anyone who just wants to go dog walking, is one of the things that we do, but you can donate blankets, you can do a range of other things, but we have fun dog walking there. It's really open, really, um, um, yeah, they're just really welcoming, I suppose. Um, you just rock up, you take a dog, and the staff is always with the person. But I've, I used to have another lead, which I always have actually, that I can clip onto the dog as well. So the person can hold the dog, but I've got a backup lead because some people have been really nervy, but they still want to take the dog for a walk. So we've come up with that solution. But then I've got other people that are so confident and I'm right there if there's something that happens, but they've just strolled out in front and just love the fact that that's their role and their responsibility to walk that dog and be mindful of where it is, that there's people coming up on bikes and be mindful, turn around, and think about who's in your environment, who's in your community that you need to be aware of. Um, and so they've really loved that. Um, and, you know, just learning to deal with a dog, but also learning to deal with the people at the pet haven, so being polite, saying hello, um, asking the questions themselves, um, those sort of things has been really good. St Kilda Mums, so that's in, um, in this Clayton, um, it's a warehouse where they pack up baby goods and um, a whole range of other things, products for people who need assistance with that sort of stuff and the guys have done cleaning of baths, packing up baby hampers, um, washing baby grows. Um, a whole range of other things, but that's again following a task, following instruction, putting this thing into this thing and then into this thing, or following that you need to, um, what's the word, um, sterilise things properly, etc. So, and it's another team that have gone as a group of like four or five people, so they're working with each other, so it's learning that team, team cooperation. The morph therapy um, was a really interesting one that came through word of mouth and that was, um, it's a lady who runs a horse therapy place for the horses but then also once the horses have become rehabilitated, she wants to work for them to engage with people and have therapy for people working with the horses. And one of our guys absolutely adores animals and so that was a real targeted place for him and he went and just like the horses loved him, he loved them, he was brushing, cleaning, um, feeding and um, walking their dogs as well so it was a double whammy for him. Um, so that's going to be his kind of work experience placement. Canara Community House, they were really open to some, one of our guys working in their garden centre. So it's a community garden, they have a whole range of volunteers, the same volunteers go every week so it's a real um, community vibe there and you get to know people. And so he's been doing that for months and months and has learned a whole range of skills, not just gardening. They've done building projects, 
Um, and again, having to learn to engage with people you don't know, um, who don't know you, um, and just, yeah, be a valued member of that, that team. Um, Lawyer Jeeps is the coffee shop I was saying before, one of our girls are working at. Um, and the Hills Up Shop is also within Fenchel Gully where one of our guys was doing work, work experience. And for a friend, is a, it's actually a fairly new partnership that we've got up in um, Gladysdale, which is in the middle of nowhere, which is another stunning place to be working. <laughs> um, whether you can call it work, I don't know. You just It's feeding the animals and um, being in the beautiful surroundings, basically. But they absolutely adore it there. Um, they have pretty much full responsibility for feeding the animals themselves. Um, they went through it over a number of weeks of what who what animal gets what, and then they were like, okay, you know what you're doing, you go. So they're really good at promoting them to be independent, and and so we as staff also are there, but we let them do as much as possible, and they thrived in that environment. Um, yeah, just taking real responsibility and ownership over their role. So they're just a few of the people we've been working more closely with, and we've got other other workplaces that we've um, teamed people up with as well and have in the background and continue to follow up those those places but they're the main ones we've worked worked with over the last couple of years. Yeah so any questions I suppose is the next stage so yeah feel free to ask any questions. Okay. Um, Lydia when you say small groups what numbers are you talking? Um, we normally have about eight participants and then about four staff so High staff ratio and small group, so yeah, no more than eight guys. Cool. Yeah, the normal group. Yeah, thank yeah. you. And just a quick question for me: um, How do you go about approaching workplaces? Um, so yeah, d depending on whether we've already had um, prior contact, like we know it through a word of mouth. So some some of them we have approached, we've known through other staff members have said, oh, "I'll try my uncle; he's really open." Um, so we'll go there, or we'll get the person whose family member it is to have an initial talk. So it's a variety of different ways you might do that. But generally if it's work experience, we might just basically turn up to a workplace and say, would you guys be open to work experience? We've got some people with disabilities who are looking to get some gay work skills. Um, you know, I think they'd be good at these type of roles that you seem to have in your store. You know, and we just sort of, sort of start the process of conversation around whether they're interested in helping us out. Some people are like, nah, we don't do that. And some people are like, oh, oh, tell me a bit more about that. And they're open to engaging at least in a more of an in-depth conversation. And so some of them, yeah, we've set up and they've just gone great. And so we'll, and they're continuing to be like one of those places that we can go back to with new people. Um, and if it's for work, as in we, we've got their resume, we know they've got the skills to work in this employer, they've got vacant places, then we would just approach them in a bit of a different way. Um, but we would potentially be, might have a person with us, we might go just initially on our own as a staff member to just introduce the concept. And then we might say, okay, if you're interested, we might bring Johnny along and you can meet him and have a chat and see how you guys get on. And, and then, yeah, like, let's have a trial. Um, so yeah, that's kind of basically how, how we would do that. Thank yeah. you. Cool. Any other questions or is that it? No, awesome. thank you. So yeah, well thanks for coming, thanks for listening. Um, and yeah, I guess if you've got any more questions, um, you can um, follow the links on here, email Linda, she's our coordinator of the program. So there are details, so feel free to contact her at any point.